This video is brought to you by Midway USA. Support the channel by choosing Midway for your shooting and outdoor supplies. The following video was safely filmed at a closed range that regularly trains civilian and law enforcement professionals. It's a nice looking little wimpy 9mm you got there. Wimpy 9mm? Yeah. <laughs> Partridges do the same when they hit you. <laughs> well... <laughs> they do the same to the enemy. <laughs> this obviously does a lot more to you and I. And thank you, I was feeling a little under the weather today. And uh, Josh decided to, me help, to help my sinuses a little bit. Yes. So we're here at the BTO Range and Training Center in Conroe, Texas, where uh, we're going to be answering a very specific question, which many of you have posed, which is, in a world where short barrel 10.5, 5.56, and rifle caliber guns exist, why would you ever use an a HK SP5? Well, I mean, listen, Mr. Rich. <laughs> so, why would you ever use so, any sort of a 9mm subgun or PDW? What's a hypothesis? Well, what I have seen is people suggest the idea that the terminal ballistics and lethality of the rifle calibers so far exceed those of, say, 9mm or another pistol caliber round, uh, that there's no reason not to be running something like this, especially because the size profiles are, oh, well, they are a bit different. They are a bit different, and I could do this. They are a bit, well, so, I mean, I can kind of do that. You can kind of do that, but. Okay, so you can see already, no, 10 and a half inch Mark 18s are not the same size as a PDW, because this is not even a PDW, this is a sub gun. Yep. Never mind if we were to actually go to a PDW. So, with that said, we've got a whole bunch of different rifles and sub guns and PDWs that we want to, uh, you know, that we want to demo in this nice, tight, little enclosed space. So what do you say? You're saying that rifles are obviously always better than subguns, then. They said it. Really? Indoors. Oh. Oh, hello, Ian. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. How are we today? We've got our friend Ian from Big Tech's Ordnance here. His actual Instagram handle, by the way. It is. And um, today we've got a plethora. Oh, wow. Thank a you. Cart of goodness for bringing a shopping cart of doom out here. Anytime, that's what I'm here for. So I think the biggest thing people talk about is why would you sell yourself short when you have the presence of rifle cartridges? Puns, short barrels. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, no, and, you're right. Why, why would you go with a uh, lower terminal effect pistol cartridge when in fact rifle cartridges in short barrel systems exist, right? Because of course. Oh no. Of course. I could shorten this. Josh's, this is Josh's favorite. Yeah. Protect me I could at shorten all costs. this to the same size <clears throat> as my MP5. Yes. So of course this is going to be giving me more value Right. To the package, right? More, more, power in the, uh, more power in the ballistics, right? You're shooting a full Haas rifle. Oh, round. yeah. That was, that was aggressive. Can you imagine touching this off? If someone came in? I was ready for the carpet to catch on fire, dude. But, I mean, so here we are. Like, what, to what extent does the concussion actually affect your performance indoors? Because the GIGN actually uses Bren 2s uh, that shoot 7.6239 with 8-inch barrels. I'll put it this way. When you're in control of the device, it is materially easier to manage what's going on. In other right. words, when I'm in control of touching the gun off, 
and I know when it's happening and I'm ready for it, it still sucks, but it is way better than just being stood next to yeah. Henry and just feeling like this fireball happening next to you. But then if you don't have ear pro, it's two in the morning, you're just wandering around trying to clear a room. I would not want to do it and it would not be enjoyable. Here, even let me get you some ammo. You even have suppressed. You have a flashbang along with your rifle. Right, exactly, yeah. yes, 100%. Oh, I've already shot this, Henry. Okay, Ian. Yeah. Would you like the honors? Well, I put sure. a I put a suppressor on to help him lessen yeah. the impact slightly. Yeah. Get in there, Ian. Here you go. <laughs> I mean, definitely better than before. Yeah. But once you add a suppressor to a short barrel rifle, it no longer has that advantage of being short. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. You familiar with the H and K's? Yeah. Best. It's the OEM. OEM. I mean, there's a light and day difference. Yeah. yeah. Even suppressed and unsuppressed. Yeah. Right. Because again, this is an unsuppressed versus suppressed, and this still feels better. Yeah. Right. F yeah. Without a doubt, from a concussion <coughs> perspective. Now, I mean, one thing I think, and I did bring. This was a perfect excuse for me to bring this guy out. Oh gosh. I personally think that when the Soviets went to the short, and I mean, let's say the classic SBR, like hyper short barrel before the G36s, before any of that, I think it was the AKSU, quite frankly. And for the Soviets, I think it makes sense because you're making a submachine gun that takes the same ammunition as all of your rifles. And so when you're talking about ammunition exchangeability within the squad, within the small unit, within the armor, um, vehicle, this makes sense, but it was not very well liked. And I think this conical device is a little bit of a um, acknowledgement of <laughs> how bad it sucks to shoot short barrels indoors. Ready? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just dramatically better already than what we just saw out of both the Galil and the 10.5 Mark 18, like yeah, without 100%. a doubt. This is just, this is just dramatically better. I mean, you're shooting, you're shooting 545 versus 76239, right? True, but between that and this configuration, now granted, this has a this does have a break versus that has the, the, the conical device. It's literally pressing the blast forward. Yeah. Uh, but the difference is dramatic. Very effective. Very effective. So kind of like the Noveski NX, uh, what the is pig, that? The, the flaming, flaming pig. pig. Yeah. yeah, like the, uh, the Surefire Warden also. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right, yeah. that's yeah. right. When do you gain an advantage of using a rifle caliber? Well, there, there, you gain it universally from a terminal ballistics perspective, right? Mm -hmm. But you also have a very reasonable and realistic trade-off that takes place, especially in an environment where you're likely to be using a PDW, i.e. enclosed spaces, uh, inside a home, uh, inside a vehicle, for example. Touching off that Galil, touching off that Mark 18 inside of a vehicle? It sucks. Big suck. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. suck. And, and I mean, the other thing too, to, to mitigate that suck, you essentially turn it back into a regular length rifle. Right, so Henry, to your point, like when we do that and you add that suppressor, as you said, like the Mark 18 already starts long, right? It's yep. already longer, because it's not really PDW. So when people are saying, oh, well, you could just use an SB, like a Mark 18 SBR, like, nah, it's not the same length. But as soon as we get there, this is a 16 inch gun. Yep, it's the same right. as a like, carbine. This is a 16-inch gun. Front. That's right. It's a bal It's a different balanced 16-inch carbine. Yeah. So that's obviously an important delineation. Now, what I do want to do is pull out uh, and go the other direction, which ah. is what if we take the the PDW or the MP5 configuration, throw the can on here, and in this instance, we're still barely, you know, we're we're effectively the same length now mm -hmm. as the full-size MP5 in the K configuration and you mitigate a significant amount of the blast. Yeah. A huge amount, right? Yeah. So the, the size and the size of this particular gun is very much yeah, still like packable, wieldable. Yeah. It is the exact same size. Exact same length. Packable, wieldable, but again, when I go to actually engage with it, it is very, very pleasant. Can may I, I, may I add when you when you pull the uh, the stock back, slap the 
the charging handle is very attractive. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah well, it, please, it was, it was hot. I, I insist. I insist. It's comical. Yeah. It's comical. Recoil. Right. Even, oh even the recoil, because when, even when you go to a Mark 18, in spite of the fact that it's extremely controllable for all things considered, I mean, it's a 5.56 gun. It's not, we're not shooting anything big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still far, in my opinion, shooting them side by side, even with the break, this is still easier to control and keep on target. I mean, it's got multiple things going for it, right? It's a suppressed 9mm, it's an MP5, so low recoil to begin with. Um, it, honestly, even with a suppressor, uh, pistol cans are far lighter than rifle cans, so it's really well balanced. You have your optic is actually better suited than some, well, it's similar height to this, but way lighter than my system. Mm -hmm. Because I, I went for a legacy system. So oh, this is wow. Still, that Look at everybody's surprise. That old school cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Look at everybody's surprise at Henry going for the old school setup. So, um, I would say one thing. All right, so... This right here is Ian's 300 Blackout. I think 300 Blackout has kind of been like the big disruptor in the recent years to the market where it kind of starts bridging the gap between short barrel rifle and rifle. But in some instances, I get a sentiment that either it's best of the both worlds or it's like a 40 cal. Mm. where it kind of is the worst of the both worlds. That's actually a really interesting way to put it. Like, is it the best of all options, or is it actually two, two compromises that aren't amazing? Right, because your 300 Blackout ballistic-wise is very similar to 76239. Right, so good. But that's the thing. When you're shooting subs, then why not use a submachine gun and have better ammunition logistics and actually have the reliability with, the, with a wide, very amount of ammunition? Yeah, absolutely. Because my understanding is that 300 blackouts, unless you overgas them slightly, they're kind of finicky on both super and subs. Yeah, I think in my experience, and be interested to hear yours on this as well, Ian, when I'm shooting my 300 black setups, I can get subs with a suppressor on the low end, of, like mm -hmm. low on gas. I can get supers without the suppressor at sort of like everything feels great. Yeah. And then I can get supers with the cam, but it's it's extra gassy. Yeah, yeah. yeah this uh, I normally run supers out of it. Mm -hmm. Just this is a little ammo picky when it comes to subs. Mm -hmm. um, I have to find that one ammo that it really likes mm -hmm. for that for for this rifle to, to like it. Yeah. So I normally run um, 150 grain soft points if for a defensive load. If, if this is next to my nightstand. Yeah. So yeah. then then you're also running to the same issue as the Mark 18. Excuse yeah. me where you've got the length issue, even with it extended, yeah. you've got the same issue with the length holder. Yeah. So Ian's got the law <laughs> on here, but still you run into the same, a similar issue of, we get one round like this. It's still great, like this mm -hmm. is still great. I also run a law folder on my 300 black for this exact reason, yeah. like packability and, and concealment, but you still really can't engage. No, like this. this doesn't have the new um, BCG from law where you can shoot it right. folded, so. Right. Yeah, it's it's the same size. Do you want to uh, you yeah, want to light can, it up? We can let it rip. Once again, yep. I am right next to the ejection port for these range <laughs> talks. Oh, yes, oh, mm, the cancer. Dude. The love, the, the enjoyment of shooting indoors. I will say that the light switch position for me is a little bit, you, do you have bear paws? Yeah, I got pretty big hands. Yeah, so for me, um, it's a little out of position for my for my hands, which you could see me going off and yeah, on yeah. with the light there. Um, I mean, you you shoot that and tell me, is it is it softer than the Galil or not? That to me is. I've seen some that aren't, but that one to me is. I don't know, to me, I mean, maybe it Galil's mine. That's why I, it doesn't feel that way to me. Now, something though, when it comes to balance and everything, I mean, I know, I know this is not something that I'm taking very, very seriously on this note. However, people don't talk about the actual PDWs, the MP7 and the P90s, because let's, let's face it, ballistically, go ahead. Ballistically, they are. Is this a PDW or an SMG? That's a braced pistol. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a modernized Tommy gun, to be honest. It's got the, the vibes to it. Thank you for bringing this You're welcome. This one, so um, 
When it comes to the P90s, one thing that you hold up one of those subguns, or hold up this one. Lengthwise, it doesn't seem like it's it's really, it doesn't seem like you're really gaining much, right? Yeah, it lifts it up a bit. There we go. However, I will say, compared to when you're firing a pistol, ha having the index out with a with a PDW, you are actually tighter in. Uh, yeah, okay, so, sure enough. So um, with these little PDWs, and same thing for the Flux Raider and the MP7, your like index point is actually really tucked close to you. And so when you're rounding corners, you almost, you don't even have to short stock it or anything. Mm -hmm. You just straight round the corner directly. It's shorter, the front end is almost sh is light, slightly shorter than MP5K unsuppressed. Nice laser. Laser. Laser beams. Non existent. I mean. So, single hand operation. Let's say, like, if I'm trying to grab something for a, someone else. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, those, those would then go in favor of P90s. However, however. I would say ammunition logistics wise and terminal ballistics, that has to be a huge that has to be a huge draw for you to want to get something, get into something like a P90 to be actually usable. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I will say Ooh, the gas the, out the, the trigger in that is is Phenomenally nice. Did it gas you out? It did. Yeah, it is, it is a little. Gas. What? I, if I may add something, I do like the smaller compact guns. You said you just mentioned it. If, you know, if I have to grab, I, I don't have any kids, but if I if I had to go grab a child, secure. Yeah, them, go hands off in go, some way. Right? Go hands off. Yeah. I can still. I mean, I could shoot this like this if I if I had to. Right. Or under, the under the arm. Under you like the extend arm. the stock. Yeah. Uh, brace. Like Excuse me. Brace. Extend the brace. No, I think your point your point is is valid. Like the the other piece again, if we if we just look at the difference between say doing even if we we put length to the side exclusively mm -hmm. and we just say the difference between, you know, having this system and that system or this. The weight distribution on this gun with a suppressor on it can I do it out here? Yes, I can do it out here, but man, does it, it does it suck. Yeah, yeah. And it's not a lot of fun to do that. You know, this, is, doing this, it with this is just extreme. Bullpups take that weight distribution question into a whole different extreme though. Right. Because you could shoot the single hand the entire time without any issue. For sure. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about here, Henry, um, was... Pistols. Pistols. Uh, and the, specifically, I wanted to talk about it from the perspective of having a, a comp or ported gun. Mm -hmm. um, really looking at like how much does that change things. Outdoors, I can't see the, the, the fire, the gas, the venting at all. On a ported gun, comped gun, I mean, maybe you can catch it a little bit, but not really. But inside... Absolutely, I could see it. I'm seeing it come up even uh, with the like light a, on. Yeah, is it the like vent. a V? Yeah, the V, yeah. But it's... Um, I mean, handguns in vehicles in, in, and in closed spaces also are very useful. Are, they're useful, but they also suck. Yeah. Well, when, it comes, would, when it comes to noise... And, I, I would put it this way. Guns in tight and closed spaces suck. Yes. Yeah, right? And that, that is ultimately, gang, like I think where we're going with this episode. Keep in mind that when you're in a tight and enclosed space, and even inside here, we're not in that tight of a space. No. If we were back behind some of the stanchions, like right inside the, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the buckets, I suppose, like that's even worse. Mm -hmm. And so when there's the, the constant and immediate go-to mm -hmm. of, well, I would just shoot a rifle round because lethal, more lethal, whatever, and, and or I don't need a suppressor or I don't want a suppressor for various reasons, like, uh, okay, fi fine. That not that's not wrong, but consider very carefully that, like, especially I think about it within the context of if I ever touched it off in a tight and enclosed space, in the house, in a room, uh, in a vehicle, and we've I think all three of us have trained shooting in vehicles, mm -hmm. shooting in CQB, <coughs> training whatever. It is um, it sucks immensely, 
And the thing is, most of the time we're doing it with hearing pro on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes double hearing it, Right, and it still yeah. sucks. It's, I mean, it transcends the length. That's mm -hmm. when people only look at the length. Guys are just looking at these like, on paper, this in a video game. That's how it works. In a video game, if you get a cartridge, like a rifle cartridge, your hit points are higher than an MP5, typically. Mm -hmm. And so guys are looking at this like it's a hit point thing. But the part of video games that I don't show you is the discombobulation, the concussion, and a lot of that violence that comes out of shooting short barrel rifles. And then if you mitigate it with a suppressor, it's not a short barrel rifle anymore. That's it, that, and that's a key piece. And for example, I just went and ripped the can right off of the, the K here for the purposes of sort of demoing, right? You saw me shoot it with the can. And that's without the can. And it's not that bad in comparison to so many of these other setups that we're shooting. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the actual length of something like this is super trim, super short. I think the, the big thing that comes down to this, you know, you're gonna get guys who look at these things and they're thinking, I mean, there is a, obviously there is a space, there is a use case for these hyper small uh, sub uh, short barrel rifles. Oh, without without a doubt. And Special I think, operations guys use it all the time. I think that, that that's the key, right? In many ways, to, to your point, this is not a that's right and the short barrel rifle is wrong, but so often it's suggested the other way around, right? It's suggested, why would I ever have uh, this uh, MP5 when a 300 blackout exists? And it's like, yeah, that, I mean, Yes, there is certainly a really good argument about that and for that, but mm -hmm. at the same time, when you start working in enclosed spaces, like the concussion, the amount of um, the amount of that concussion, how it how it works is is pretty ruthless. I'd say just because people typically don't shoot from vehicles all the time or shoot inside of their houses or under the basements, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean. I mean, it, uh, quite quite contrary to that, that's probably a more likely scenario that you would be using these things. So thinking about these things outside of, you know, what what hit points could this provide me? And more so, is this tool suitable for my use? Ian, thanks for having us out. Thanks, and uh, until next time, y'all. We'll see ya. All right, that was kind of mean. Uh, here's some UMP45 footage for you as we close out. Thank you for sticking with us all the way to the end. And we'll see you on the range. Seven one six is Delta Six Four Vic Eight Pack Red Con One Green Green Hot Copy Over. Delta Nine Six, this is Seven One Six Roger Over. One Six Delta Nine One One Pack Green Green Over. Seven One Six Roger Over. One Six